and blessings everyone. Today in this video, I want to talk to you guys about Olita Jikindo to Oneng, or in other words, in English, why can't I speak or sing or voice out when I journey? All right? The number one thing when you go into your spiritual journey or, or spiritual path, whether you're becoming a shaman, uh, a specific healer of some sort, a seer, a wizard, whatever it is. Today I'm speaking about specifically shamanism. However, this can still help you in your healing journey in whoever you're trying to find that missing link to in that inner part of you. This is the gift that you are trying to reach and it doesn't have to just be in the shaman way but this shaman way can help you to get closer to all your gifts and abilities today i want to talk to you about the mindset when you seek your spiritual path and especially into the shamanic path right or the healer path you're going to focus on the mindset being conscious to your body, your mind, and your spirit. What kind of spirit are you um, having today, right? What kind of spirit are you in when you go into the spiritual part of you? Number one, and the most important part, there's a lot of important pieces, right? But number one, the reason why most people cannot open up their voice during a spiritual journeying or shamanic journeying is they are fear-based in their thoughts. So you're feeling fear towards your spirit guides themselves. The ones that are supposed to guide you on the journey, you are feeling fear towards. You are not trusting in them. You're feeling like they are a burden to your life. You're feeling as though they are making it more complicated for you in your life to go through your life more smoothly, right? So you're, you're putting this fear onto your guides and blaming them for the burdens that you are going through and experiencing in your life or the areas of your life. And that is not true. Your guides are to bring you the blessing. They're trying to bring you the smoothness that goes uh, into your life for you to have a smooth ride, right? But now you're in the deciphering of your, of your mindset. You're thinking it's your guides that is burdening you. But in fact, it is not. Because this can only be explained through your own experience. The other thing with fear and being in a fear-based mindset is that your fear is towards this journey. This journey that you're going on, you have no clue of what you're doing. You have no sense of, of really knowing if it's going to be black or white or gray, and you're fearing the journey all the way through. I want you to open up your mind and not fear the journey because the more that you fear the journey you're going to shut yourself away and you're going to eventually stop yourself on your journey and not go any further to smoothen that journey up however it will only get harder all right for those of you that have experienced it you know what I mean for those of you that haven't you you should listen so that you don't have to make the same mistake all right. The other thing is fearing towards this teacher or Sifu that you have connected with. So you have found a Sifu or you have found a, a, a teacher and you are fearing they're connecting to you or you connecting to them. You are also fearing that they may not be uh, trustful, right? That you can't trust them fully, that they whatever they're teaching you may not be what you need to know. Maybe something that you already know perhaps, right? And so you are uh, degrading your Sifu or teacher, teacher. There's a reason why you've met the Sifu or teacher. It is for you to learn more and not reinvent the wheel. But at the same time, the Sifu and teacher also needs to have this feeling of integrity, right? Between you and them. They also have to have the honesty as well. And there's a feeling that just resonates with you to trusting the Sifu or teacher. So you must also trust them in order to work with them and your spirit guides to work with you. They are the one that's going to bridge you to your spirit guides. But at the same time, there are some of you 
that has been called to the journey that have already this bridging to your spirit guide. So your Sifu is not really bridging you, but they will in fact filter and purify uh, this path for you, okay? And or your guides, uh, that other element as well. But you must actually trust your Sifu or teacher in order for you to work with them. So perhaps you may want to work with them a few times on one-off sessions before you can really trust in calling them or formally um, uh, asking them to be your Sifu. And they can formally also accept you to be their disciple. All right. That is very important. Also, the fear toward your thoughts in it in and of its own your thoughts are bringing you fear whether it's day or night you are thinking to yourself this this path is a burden you're thinking to yourself my teacher i don't really trust in them fully or i don't think they can get me there well there's a reason why you think they, they may not be able to get you there but justify that for yourself right and then towards the journey, your fear is towards your spiritual journey. You're thinking that you may not get to the journey. You may not know what this journey is all about. And that when you go into it, you're going to it with uh, uh, a blackened uh, surface that you have no idea and no clue where it's going to get you or that it would get you anywhere. You are also doubting, right? And that's the next one. Doubtful. Number two is doubtful. Your doubt that you are not trusting this journey fully, right? You're doubtful that the journey is going to be uh, a success to you. The journey that is going to really help you and heal you may not help you and heal you. This is your doubt. If you doubt it and you continue to doubt it, it will be you living in your doubts. Therefore, you will not get to the journey and you will not be able to open up your voice. Now, if you have not even shaken in regards to the vibrations in the body uh, as you become this healer and you are still in the midst of trying to seek it out still, don't worry about it, but you just have to find the right teacher, right? Or the right Sifu. If those of you that you have been called and you are already having the vibrations without having a Sifu, you are already having visions and all the teachings, some of the, these teachings and this clear sort of um, connection to your guides, right? Like a, like a computer that has great Wi-Fi and you're downloading some of these things. You can download them, but at the same time, you feel like you need some help and this help is going to be the next level for right. you and so as you go into this journey these doubts are going to hinder you are they they're going to make you struggle to get through the journey but you must tell yourself that the doubts and the fears that we had just talked about are all in fact negative to your journey and they will bring in negative and continue to do that if you are not strong and again it's only the strongest will survive the strongest of the fittest, right? The fittest of what? Of mindset. So you have to be fit in your mindset. But this is journey, this whole spiritual journey is not saying that you are uh, going to be perfect when you start your, your journey. You are actually healing this mindset of your as you go through your journey. So that is absolutely normal, okay? Self-judging per your life experiences. You want to stop all this, all this self-judging because of your life experiences. Some of you have gone in ups and downs and relationship is issues. You have been the one that is the victim. You have also been the one that is uh, the person that, um, you know, caused pain for the other person. There's all these, all of you individuals, right? We are all individuals of different life experiences that we are embarrassed to talk about, that we are embarrassed to even admit to, right? But we were in those experiences for a very good reason in our life and in this lifetime together. You are doing your own life, yes. You are having your own experiences, yes. But when you take a look at the bigger picture of all our, our humankind, we are all in fact in this together and nobody is different from the other as in from the big picture everyone has their own different details in your life experiences right and it is for you to learn and to experience so that you can believe in yourself and not fear not doubt anymore all these life experiences you will have to live up to the embarrassment part of it right alleviate the ego 
let down your pride and allow yourself yet to not be embarrassed, but to be proud that you are okay with stating the fact that you had gone through a certain life experience for you to learn your lesson, the karmic lesson, whatever that lesson may be, and that now you know better. All right. What your guides love the most, guys, is for you to admit that you are okay with going through the life experiences that you had in the pain or in the happiness, right? In the suffering or in the joy, joyous part of your life. So whatever it could be, dark, light, black or white, it is up to you to be okay and conscious to all these experiences that you have gone through and to say, I'm okay with that. I acknowledge that I gone through that for this reason. And I admit that I was a fool in that situation, but I am better now. That takes a very strong person or a person that becomes strong to admit that publicly or outwardly, whether it's to the public or whether it's to the universe. The most important thing is that the spirit of you feels this part of you that is admitting, that is not in denial anymore, and that is just that is a person that just wants to know and feel the truth for themselves. Not for anybody else, and not to prove anything, but just to feel it for themselves. This is going to be key to you vibrating and or opening up the voice that is inside of you because this voice there is a voice that seeks justice there is a voice that seeks to be heard and that seeks to be listened to and that is the voice that your guides want you basically they're here with you or there with you and they are trying to drag this voice out of you, but the only way to do it is for you to realize your truth or to just be, for some of you, it's going to be automatically, you're in it, right? You're, you're vibrating, you're voicing out. For some of you, it's going to take a while and it's a learning curve. This whole learning curve still, again, has to do with your healing, this is like a little child or a baby that was born and they may take up to two years to speak. For some, it's like six months and they're talking, right? They're trying to make out words. For some, it's two years old, three years old. Some even at the latest I've seen or heard of is four years old that they are then willing to say something, a word. It's not because the person can't say it or can't physically say it, right? It is because there's something in their brain, in your mind, and how it's set that is not allowing you to be conscious of your voice. And this is getting to the consciousness of your voice. Whether it's you here in the physical world, you as who, who you know it, right? Through the experiences that, that you have gone, it's that person that you know, or is it the person that also goes into the journey and when you're called or chosen or you choose to go into this journey, that you are willing to listen to your conscious mind and the voice that is conscious inside of your mind, which is your inner voice, okay? That is when the connection is going to become more clear. That is when the connection is going to be uh, what you feel very strongly that expresses how you feel as well as a person, not just what your spirit guides are leading you to do, but also you yourself. The biggest and most important factor is how you feel about the relationship that you have established with you and your spirit guides, if any. The question is, have I established a trustful relationship between myself and my spirit guides? You guys be the one to answer that question, okay? What is your comfortability with them? Are you comfortable with calling and summoning your spirit guides, right? Are you comfortable with being on the bench or standing? Those of you that ha have gone into shamanic training, you know what I'm talking about. Or the ones that have seen it before. How comfortable are you 
when you are going on that spiritual journey, when you are journeying into the spirit world. How comfortable are you? That also has to do with the trusting of your teacher or Sifu and the trusting of you and your spirit guides. Trust the journey. Trust the journeying process. It may not be enough for you to trust in your guides and them to you. You might not have enough of that yet. So continue to do it. Continue to trust the healing process. Because the whole time, you are also healing. You're healing emotionally. You're also healing with communication. That's your voice, right? And you're also healing body-wise. You're healing your spirit, your soul, your energy, the energy that runs through your blood and body fluids, it's also healing as well. You're also healing this fear, fear factor of trust, this doubt of judging yourself, right? Or thinking that other people is going to judge you as well. Other thing is unbiasedness. What is the percentage of your mind being unbiased? to any information or activity that comes your way. So all the things that you've experienced in your life, maybe you have been called or chosen to go into the shamanic path or a healer's path, right? Whatever kind of healer you are. Maybe you have been chosen to do certain healing things, right? Or to be more conscious even, just to awaken to your spirituality and really hone in on what you believe in. Or is it something that you believe in, right? Can it be something that you believe in? And why is it that you do or would believe in that in that certain one or certain kind? Whatever kind it is, it is all one. Whatever type that you want to call it, it is all one. Why? Because it is a universal energy of healing interconnected between all human beings. So unbiasedness. What is it? Can it be? And how can this be become better if you can be unbiased? To what percent did you enter into your spirituality unbiased minded? And at what percent are you now in your unbiased mind? That is going to be a criteria determined upon your spiritual path and how the events come to play. And then the timing is very important because you may not be ready. Why? Because it's all of the above. All the things that we had talked about already relates to the timing of your spiritual journey as well. You're not just ready or haven't had enough deep connection, heartfelt. So you're, you might be too early in the process and then too late in the process as well. For some people, you go in about six months and you want to just be there. You want to just be vibrating and, and voicing out and singing your, your, your um, healing songs and going at it. For some of you, it takes 20 years and then now you're kind of getting it. You're opening up your voice. You're starting to vibrate and you're finally trusting to have a Sifu or lowering your pride and ego to be willing to have a teacher or just learning from someone else. Plainly, right? So through, through all these aspects that are stopping you from being who you need to be, which is yourself, in fact, your guides want you to get there and be who you need to be, which is your authentic self. And through your healing is a avenue that they are taking you through this spiritual journey when you journey is going to be the most vigorous part of your healing um, that you can feel to yourself and the soonest that you can help other people as well. So all this is affected by how your guides were connected to you. Were they also connected to you naturally without nobody there to invigorate you or was it an event that invigorated your guides to come and connect or was it you choosing to go onto the path choosing a sifu and then they opened up the invigoration of your spirit guides to you 
all this and through your spiritual journey, right? And how you journey and go on to vibrate or voice the different songs that you sing, the different healing uh, um, techniques that you do and that you learn from. The most important part is it's going to be from your spirit guides. And your spirit guides are the ones that is going to lead you there ultimately. But it was for some of you, and I'll say most of you, 99.9%, it's going to take you to release your ego and your pride, your doubts and your fear. And the thought of being embarrassed to do something that is out of your norm, right, out of the box, then will help you to bridge you more deeply into your journey and will help you to be more comfortable within your journey. And all this, again, has to do with timing and the mindset. If you have any questions, put that down below in the comments. And I hope to speak to you soon uh, in the next video here. Warm blessings from Master Shaman Palai Chi.